Welcome. Our development efforts are continuing, and we wanted to give you an update on our progress towards Air Manager 3.0, which we expect to be released sometime late in the first half of 2017. You're looking at a very early beta of Air Manager 3.0, and I wanted to point out some of the new features that we're going to be adding. When you first look at the main window, it doesn't look like much has changed on the surface. But one feature we have added beneath the surface is automatic connection, which is already used in our iPad app. This means that you no longer have to configure Air Manager and tell it what simulator you're using and its IP address. If Air Manager detects a simulator on the network, it happens automatically. Of course, manual configuration is still available. You can still select panels and uh, add instruments and configure them as you could in the previous versions of Air Manager. One thing that has changed is that now a panel is a single window. So instead of having a separate window for each instrument, the instruments all reside in a single window. If I start one up, you can see all the instruments are laid out in the uh, single window, as you see here. This offers a real advantage over the old system because now you can lay out the window and move and resize the entire panel instead of having to work with individual instruments, which was quite cumbersome. So you can move and resize the window just as you could the individual instruments in earlier versions of Air Manager. We can also select a monitor and have the window fill that monitor in a full screen mode. Another major change in Air Manager 3.0 is a switch from a Java-based rendering engine to one based on OpenGL. As an example, let's open a panel that contains nine of our fairly complex glass cockpit displays and show the performance still up around 60 frames a second. This was impossible with the previous version based on Java. Although rather impractical, this example does show that Air Manager will run on lower powered computers. Here we see Air Manager 3.0 beta running on a small stick computer, Intel based and using internal graphics only. And you can see that we get quite nice frame rates here, almost 60 frames a second, nice smooth movement of the instruments and we're running a full HD monitor. It appears that this $110 computer will easily run most full HD monitors for Air Manager panels in the future, which opens up a lot of possibilities. Another feature we're adding is integration with the Raspberry Pi version of Air Manager, which should be released about the same time as 3.0. You can configure a Raspberry Pi running Air Manager directly from the desktop version. As you can see here, we have one Raspberry Pi in the network which Air Manager has found, which we can configure pretty much the same way we do with the desktop version. This greatly speeds up the development process, as you'll see. So let's first add a panel and name it something like blank. And now to this panel, let's add some instruments. Let's select a few instruments. Uh, these four are good. And you can see the instruments have been added to the panel. And now we can push this configuration to the Raspberry Pi by clicking Save. And the instruments are now visible on the Raspberry Pi screen. The Raspberry Pi will also connect to X-Plane and you can see the uh, live values are being displayed already. But as you can see, the instruments are not positioned correctly, so let's uh, take care of that. Now let's uh, space these in instruments out by changing the coordinates a bit to uh, get them unstacked so we can see them. And we'll just enter some values here to change them. And uh, when we're done, we'll click Save and uh, send this to the Pi again. And uh, as you can see, not a great job, uh, not completely right, but we did space them out a bit so that you can get the idea. And that's the Raspberry Pi version. Another thing we can do on the Raspberry Pi is develop. In the current version, we can select the Create Edit tab and we can edit instruments create new instruments right on the desktop. And we can see the results in real time. Version 3.0 brings this utility to the Raspberry Pi. 
All you do is select Raspberry Pi and then select Run, and the instrument is run on the Raspberry Pi. Another feature we'd like to share is that you can manipulate the I.O. on the Raspberry. We've made a small instrument demonstrating the I.O. capabilities of the Raspberry. So let's open a script here. It's a very simple script. First, we'll add an output. The output is a red LED. It's one I'll show you momentarily. Uh, it'll be the one on the right. And we add two buttons, which are these two buttons right here. So let's run this. So we just need to click Run. And when the first button is pressed, you can see it outputs the text. And the first LED is set to true, which sends power to it. So when I press the first button, the button on the left, you can see that the LED is illuminated. And when I press the button on the right, it goes out. Also notice the text is output in the uh, create window. While this is a pretty trivial example, there's really no limit to the kinds of hardware that can be interfaced into Air Manager uh, to help you build a cockpit solution. Now we remind you that this is still a fairly early beta and it's going to take us a, another two or three months to work out the bugs and make it stable. But we should have it soon and I think it's going to be worth the wait. Thanks for watching and we hope you'll check the Sim Innovations web board for updates on our progress.